All right, good morning, kids. Today, welcome to whatever. It's Monday. <gasps> Go Packers. Welcome to another exciting episode of the original Red Pill Show. Today is Monday, January 13th, 2020. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please use it your own risk. This show is on early. Wake the fuck up. Where is it? Where are you? Mr. Outdated iPad. Wake up. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please use it your own risk. Finally, show's opinionated. That's why I do it. The host especially, caller is 815-290-0912 for now. Guests, people that are interviewed, and people that are naughty in the chat room will be cast into the pits of hell forever, are and will always be opinionated. Under no circumstances whatsoever. Should opinions ever, never, ever, never be taken as advice if you are seeking professional advice, we strongly encourage you to hire a licensed ever required person in his or her field there, little Tommy. <coughs> hey, man. <coughs> no. <coughs> That's his name. <coughs> Broadcasting live from the wonderful state that's getting all fucked up. Colorado. To mention the entire country, but we won't get into We're not going to start. We're not going to go there. Already in the morning on Monday, really. I'm getting woke up and getting punched in the face. No, we don't want that. So we just want to wake up, enjoy the morning, smoke a big old joint like this one. Just have a good old time and just relax, man. It's like, really? I saw there was allegedly three Illinois, three deaths in Illinois from pot? Really? That'll be a first. I don't know, but we're going to get into that stuff because Melissa's going to call in and we're going to continue. I think we're going to make this a subject of the month by the time we get done with it about marijuana i inhaled some of that sage <clears throat> huh if i start getting weirder whatever or more weird weirder than usual it's because i'm smoking my sage man it's really good stuff i like it i got it from got it from the dispensary it keeps all the witches away <laughs> so far so good anyway so how was your weekend? Mine was nice, I have to say. Regardless of the NFL and all the shenanigans and crap they were pulling. Uh, what What's some great football that was on? I really haven't been watching football all season. But I did watch the playoffs every game. And a uh, little recognition to me. Because I predicted that the Titans would beat the, um, who's, the who's, who's the other fuckers? The Ravens. People laughed at me. People scoffed. Ha, 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 ha. Who is victorious? Me. I was right. Wasn't even close. Listen, man. You don't beat the New England Patriots because you're lucky. And I'm like, well, hell, if... Titans can beat the Patriots. They can beat anybody. They might even win the Super Bowl, which I don't think is going to happen. I think it's going to be the Packers and uh, the Chiefs, but we'll see. But anyway, great, great football. I sat here yesterday and watched two games in a row. I don't think I've ever even done that. 
So, um, very entertaining, regardless of what you think of the NFL or whatever. It's entertainment, and I turned off all my TV programming, and I only can watch the games because I use a program called Locast, L-O-C-A-S-T, and I donated five bucks a month, and I get all my local channels without a antenna through the internet. It's an app. So, uh, it's pretty cool, actually. I've been waiting to find that, and I found it, and it worked pretty damn good. So, between that and, uh, other uh, things like Disney Plus, Netflix, whatever. Um, I can watch pretty much Prime Video. I can watch off Amazon. I can pretty much get my fill on TV, although I want to watch less and less of it. And I stick with my news with OAN, which is an app that I pay five ninety nine subscription fee, and that's all I need. So that's it. Don't worry. I'll tell you what to think. Don't want to uh, you to be misled on things, and uh, they're always open for discussion, aren't they? Right, Melissa? Are you ready? Are you woke up? You have your makeup on, your coffee, and all that other crap? You want to call in and talk or what? Or you just want me to fly solo? What's up, man? I don't really care. I got this big old fucking joint here. I can have a good old time. What's up? I opened it so it should work. Voice should work. Who knows? There you are. I don't... Wow. It hung up on you. I did not do that. Let me close it and open it again. I just love when computers don't work. Da, 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 da. La, 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 la. Let's try it again, and let's go to Google Voice. Let's open it again. Okay, try it again. Let's see what's happening. Just once. Just one time. I think there's been one show where shit's worked. Let's try it again, Melissa. Put a quarter in the phone and fucking call. Ready? One. Is that working? Hmm. Maybe that's one. That should all be configured, right? Oh, boy, that's horrible. Oh, see? When in doubt, reboot or close and open. No disassemble. Hello? There we are. It's working. <laughs> it's being it's temperamental. It's about as well as my coffee worked this morning. Your what? Said it's working about as well as my coffee pot worked this morning. Oh, that sucks. Hmm. Well, it, it, it was kind of my fault. I forgot to put coffee grounds in. Oh, well, that 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 would. We'll have to have a show just on how to make coffee, apparently, for some people. Who will yeah. re- remain nameless. Yeah, yeah, I was struggling this morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's okay. I laid off the coffee to get my blood pressure down. So I'm drinking tea now for now, but we'll see. I drink tea in the afternoon. Yes, a spot of tea. I have my afternoon tea. Yes. <laughs> and we can be like Prince Henry and Meghan and move to Canada and tell everybody to piss off. <laughs> How's that sound? You want to move to Canada? About like me. They could be your neighbor. <laughs> Can't say I've ever had royalty for neighbors. Well... If you really get into it, technically they're not ro- royalty, <laughs> but we don't want to go there. So. <coughs> they're actually from Germany. How are you doing this morning? It. I'm great. It's Monday. <laughs> I had a very good weekend. I rolled me a big old joint that I'm smoking. Now we're t- going to talk about pot again. You know, whatever. See it? Is it coming up? And by the way, inhaling sage is not going to hurt you. <laughs> I don't want to find out. I felt it, though, a little bit. It's just natural from being 
Well, I wouldn't really call myself a smoker, but it's really weird when people start smoking. It's impossible to get them to inhale, and then when you shove something in your mouth and you quit smoking or whatever, you just inhale no matter what, including a big old fucking joint made of sage. So, whatever. (laughs) We'll see what the after effects are. Uh, Doubtful if you'll have any. I might. Maybe (laughs) all the demons and gremlins will come out of my body now. (laughs) (laughs) See? It's working. (laughs) No, but let's don't talk about me. Let's talk about you. How was your weekend? Um, it was a weekend, I guess. That's I don't it. Know what weekends are anymore? Just sitting on the mountain, getting what? snow. Has it been snow snowing or no? It yes. It, you know we have we've had like a couple of days over thirty degrees in the last two weeks. That's not good. So it's been cold. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, here on the Front Range in northern Colorado, it's been, uh, well, I don't know, in the mid four. I actually went out on my bike one day. Couldn't help myself. And I know. I was rather jealous. Yeah, 45. <laughs> yeah. I'll come p- pick you up sometime, take you for a ride. It'll be fun. It'd be a nice ride, actually, because would you say it is three or four hours from Denver? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go tour your I town. I that would be a beautiful ride through the mountains. Oh, my God. It's like, yeah, I when I first moved here, reminiscing a little bit, you know, I've only been to Colorado once before that, and I came out here on business, and they took me to Estes Park, and I saw all the elk roaming around like they were just okay. like, you know, dogs or whatever, and I'm like, what the fuck is this place? You know, and it was beautiful in the whole nine yard, <laughs> and... uh the thing that got me was the mountains, and I and I warned people to come out here. When my mom came out here with my dad in May, I couldn't get her out of Estes Park. Couldn't get her out of there. She goes, I. She couldn't. She couldn't comprehend that there was a town on top of a mountain. Wow. She's like, how did they get this up here? I'm like, really, man? I mean, we we just drove up the mountain, <laughs> so that might be a clue. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but but since they've done, I mean, they've they've done thirty four, I guess, going up over Thompson's Thompson River, or whatever, and all that, and uh, it's just a beautiful ride going from Loveland up to thirty four and to the top of the mountain in Estes Park. It's just if that doesn't get you, then you're not interested in living here. <laughs> Plus, I, I moved here without all that. So. No, not me. I mean that. It, oh, but the reason why I said that is the first time I went up there on a service call for my for work, I had to go to the YMC up there, which is in a valley and it's beautiful. It's right next to the National Rocky Mountain National Park, or whatever, which I've never been to. But the YMCA is just nestled in there in a valley with mountain ranges all around it. It's just crazy. It's like, oh my god. Cool. So. When I finally decided when I moved here if I was going to stay here, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go back and get my motorcycle uh, back in Illinois, fly back over the 4th of July, going on two years ago, and drive that thing back here. Because uh, all I kept thinking was I would love to come up here on my bike, and, and this would be a beautiful ride. So, Yeah. Then I really want to go from Estes Park to Blackhawk because that ride – is nothing short of amazing either. And then maybe from Blackhawk, I'll just keep going south and west, and then I'll come by you. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good start. Well, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, I want to do that, but that's why I got me a bigger bike now, and this thing will just, I mean, I could pretty much not have any worries per se unless other assholes that don't know how to drive but i don't have to worry about the bike at all because it it, it, it's just going to be phenomenal so i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait (sighs) (laughs) it's been many years since i've gotten on a bike really well well, this one i'm going to wear all my protective gear and helmet 
and all that. I mean, I've worn a helmet since I was seven playing football. It don't bother me, and I'm not claustrophobic. But when I did have my Yamaha, which was a cruiser, which everybody thought was a Harley, I just I just went around town with it. <laughs> and I never really wore my helmet. But I can't just picture myself getting on this thing, taking a long trip without my helmet on. I just I don't think it's a good decision. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. No, it definitely. I've always, I've always worn a helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to, and I'm wearing my leathers and all the whole nine yards and gloves, and I'm just going to be safe. And you know, God forbid something happens, at least I won't get scraped up by the road because I hurt. I just met a kid, not met a kid, but he shared a story about that where he, uh, the bike kicked out on him on the ass end, and he fell, and he uh, had a backpack on full of books. Thank God but it wore the books in the backpack all the way down to nothing, and he didn't get unscathed. Wow. He had his helmet on, thank God, which was all fucked up, and then he just totally had a uh, road rash on his um, forearm and he had to get surgery or something to get all He says, I have a scar for the rest of my life. He said, you, yeah. it's a good idea you wear all that crap. I said, yeah, I, I, I get it, and that's what I'm going to do. So, Yeah, I've, I've known way too many bikers and... <laughs> seen way too many repercussions of accidents yep yeah me too and i've been on them since i was 13 and i I just i and it's all been motocross and off-road and i just uh number one they won't let you get on the track without the right gear and number two i just can't you know it's like playing football without a helmet you know it just doesn't make a lot of sense (laughs) so but um (laughs) but no nothing exciting no, I'm I'm just working. I work all the time. Yeah, well, I saw I've been some working ni- in a general store. I saw some nice comments and um, things like "This is way better than YouTube." I guess that was from Rancho in the chat room. Here. Well, that's because it is. Well, yeah, but it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. Self perception can be delusional, but it's nice. To see other people are seeing that, so it looks like you uh, hit a home run on yeah. this stuff. So, yay! Yay! Yeah, Ron, uh, he's going off YouTube today. You get so a raise. Today was his last show on YouTube. You're gonna go from not <laughs> not making nothing to making nothing. How's that? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you'll 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 now be able to contribute to the retirement plan at work. <laughs> yeah, no, it is kind of cool. I like. I, so, is this chat room box thing? Is this like always open and everlasting, or whatever you want to call it? And it just this is for the entire, for everybody to use and share. Is that what that is? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this one is. Um, this is the one we'll use until our custom one is finished. Being oh, used. okay. So this is a temporary one. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the one that we're having custom made will actually be individual to each one. So. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I like it. So, I mean, I like the Spreaker interface in there, and I like the YouTube thing and the previous episodes. Where's buy my shit? Well, buy my t-shirt. Where's that? <laughs> Maybe not there. That no, would be weird. under swag. I need to, I still need to dress up the pages. Some. No, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just yeah. constructive criticism, but I know you just go to shop, right? And then oh, yeah. go to t-shirts and mu- yeah, I can get a coffee mug. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I need to, uh, I don't think I have yours up there yet, but I will get one up there. Hmm. Slacker, quit sitting around watching the snow. Oh, I know. It's all you do. Free ADHD with EV. Free, free. Hmm. I'm just looking at some of these cups. EMA cup, free to be ADHD. That's me. I would have got. I did get. <laughs> I did get diagnosed with. Uh, well, I don't think they had it back then, but ADD, because my teacher wanted to put me on Ritalin, and my mom pretty much told him to fuck off. So. Yeah, they tried to do that with my son. 
Yeah. It's like, hey, how about teaching deficit disorder, dumbasses? You know what they did? Right. You know what they did for me? I got my work done so fast. And I wasn't hyper or anything because back then that's what it was. And then if you were extremely hyper, you'd get thrown into the special ed class. I don't know how it is now. It sounds like they just shove you on drugs and tell you to shut up. But what my teacher did was she gave me extra work to do because as soon as I got done, which I was the first one in the class to get my work done, I go around acting like a clown and bothering people. Or I just sit at my desk and <laughs> bother people, you know, make make comments or whatever yeah, I would do. Yeah, that was me too. Yeah. So my teacher just gave me more work. She goes, Tim, here's more work for you. It's extra credit. That's all she did. <laughs> that was it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember getting lots of extra credit work just to get me to sit still and be quiet. Right. Um, I was a talker. I would talk to everybody and anybody who was sitting next to me. Really? They even tried putting my desk into corners away from people, and that still didn't work. <laughs> huh. Well, you should have your own show then, if you talk that much. I have to have somebody to talk to, though. You do? Yeah. I attempted to do a show by myself a couple of times, and it it failed horribly. Really? I went yeah, through but... an hour's worth of material in about 15 minutes. Well, yeah. You know what, though? That's perfectly normal. Trust me. I mean, if I had... Actually, I think if you went back on to... What's that horrible sort blog talk radio? And I think there's some yeah. there's some shows under Freedomizer Radio and under the original Red Pill Show because I did it on my own too there and they were like, oh my god, really? <laughs> it, it, it's an evolution. It's like just like your webmaster thing. You didn't the first day do then what you do now. It's the same thing. Oh yeah. It's just such a pain in the ass. You I just, just gotta... have more. I have more interest in building the back end of it than the than being on the front end. Yeah, but if you like talking, you should do it. It just takes. You just got to get through all that stuff, and then you got to work on the equipment. Then you got to work on your voice, and you get, and then nobody, including me, likes listening to their yeah. own voice. I don't think. Just like watching yourself on video or what nobody really likes that. So I think that's unless you're a narcissist and you're really like, Oh, look at me. I l- listen to my voice. Yeah, I'm saying I the shit. You know, yeah. you got people like that. They're full of themselves. But quite honestly, I don't <laughs> I really don't want to watch myself on the stupid camera or listening to myself. But once you get past that <laughs> w- then it's just like, you know what, whatever. I just you know, just really don't care. People will listen or people won't. But, my, so. Yeah, my my old partner had to trick me into going live. So. Oh, really? Trick you? Is that your train or yeah. is that me? Yeah. You have trains oh, too? Oh, that's my train. We have a train. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Really? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, this early in the morning, they're they're quite loud. I was gonna say, if you're not <laughs> awake, you are now. Only because I have my door open. No, but not you. Your na- <laughs> your neighbors or whatever, whoever lives on the mountain top, whatever. <laughs> really, you really got to blow that fucking thing that long in a mountain? And and what are you gonna do? Stop? Can't you can't fucking stop? A train. Well, so. and our our train track literally runs on the edge of the town. It's not going through town. It's on the edge of it. So why do they need to blow their horns? Well, the only thing I can say is this. Yeah, I don't know. But there's no, there's no where they're going through town, which you said they don't. But there's no place where they go across a road where there's no gates that go up and down. Is there? Not that I know of. Yeah, well, they have that here in Loveland. And don't ask me why. Going right across Lincoln Avenue, 287, which goes from here to there to everywhere, and there's a part of the road that they go across. They go across 287 and Cleveland, which is north and south. Two major roads, arteries, going through Loveland, and they don't have any crossing gates. So when they're coming through here, you can hear them a mile away before they even come blowing their horn. 
Then they get here and they blow the living shit out of it. You know, and then they're doing like 20 miles an hour. So, right. yeah, it's like really, really, guys. I mean, okay, we get, I get it. You know, either they had to put up a, a crossing gate, sell some more pot, and put up a gate, you know, and give me a break. <laughs> but yeah, they love blowing those horns, man. And I think there's, uh, I think it's like ships at sea. There's a certain cadence or how many times they do it or whatever. It means something. But with the train, it probably just means get the fuck out of the way, I would think. Yeah, I think it just means get out get out of the way. Yeah, just, I don't, just move. I don't think it means myself. Move. Yeah, just move. I'm coming. Move. So, <laughs> And wake up. We're coming. Yeah. <laughs> Those two. Yeah, so I, I probably assume you didn't watch any football, right? No, I haven't watched football in years. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it it was pretty entertaining. I, I have to admit. So, not a huge fan of. Who else in the playoffs? Who's in the playoffs? Oh boy, let's see. Yeah. Uh, who won? The Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs won. See, and all these games weren't blowouts; they were actually upsets. But then, some were upsets, and some were. Oh my God! The Chiefs are going to lose, and then they came back and won. So it's been a real crazy, very Those entertaining. Are good games. Oh man, Kansas City was down like I don't know, thirteen to nothing or twenty to nothing or some shit like that, and they came back and scored five touchdowns like in five minutes. Nice. It's crazy. Yeah, nice. but the Chiefs are in it. Uh, the Packers are in it. The uh, Titans are in it. Um, I think the. I think the Eagles won. I think that's it. There's only four left because there's two more games, or one more game, right? Well, not besides the Super Bowl. So, no, there's more than that. I think. No, there's that. No, that's it. There's four teams left for the NFC and AFC, and then whoever does, gets that goes to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, Seattle got beat, which I was. By the Packers, which was a really good game. That could have went either way. But Seattle blew it. So they could have won. But it's good. But the people that you think would be in it, like the Patriots, they're not. You think Seattle would probably be in it. They're not. The only team that you thought would be in it, in my opinion, would be Kansas City Chiefs, and they're in it because of Mahomes, a quarterback. He's just crazy good. Um, And maybe the Packers, but... They haven't done nothing in years. But, yeah, the teams you thought were going to be there aren't. So it kind of makes it huh. cool because I think some of those um, monopolies are dying off and they, they can't sustain it anymore. And you got some new blood coming in for, for new teams that might be champions. So I don't know. We'll see. But That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, but like I said before, I brought you on. It's, I, it's nice to see teams that yeah teams that aren't normally in the Super Bowl in there. Right, and I and or I at least up for it. I predicted that the the Titans would beat the Ravens because they beat the Patriots, and anybody that can beat the Patriots, and it was a good game, but anybody can beat the Patriots that says something. <laughs> and I said that, and everybody's like, "Oh no, the Ravens are on a tear, and they won all these games and this and that and everything else." This is yeah, okay. Whatever, and sure shit, the fucking the Titan Tennessee Titans won and beat the Ravens, and and people were like, "Oh my god!" It's like, yeah, ne- never say oh, never. I, I know Grandma Pat's upset. Oh, oh really? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Whatever. Big Ravens fan. Yeah. Well, the Titans got a good team, and there's a running back called his last name's last name's Henry, and he's just he's a monster. He's and he's a very talented runner. So he's someone to watch out for. So, but all in all, good game. They were really good games. I sat here with a friend for, well, two games, so they had to be over six, seven hours. So, <laughs> went to church, met him at church. Then he goes, all right, I'll call you later about the games. And then, uh, I don't want to sit in a bar for f- forever. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And I haven't been drinking for three weeks anyway, and I'm like, I'll have a an A beer or something like I did on Saturday watching some games, but I go I don't really, I don't really want to sit in a bar for two football games. So he sat and watched them here and ordered pizza. It was fun. So 
Yeah. I, I remember I, it, those days used to be really fun. Well, quite honestly. People together and just watching football all day. Yeah, quite honestly, I never really done it because I had my kids at such a young age and nobody could relate because they didn't have kids yet. And then when my kids were teenagers and growing up, those people had their kids. So they really didn't do it either. So it was ca- kind of like missing the boat with timing things. So, <laughs> but that's okay. I grew up in Texas. So, oh, I love Texas. Football, Football was kind of a given. So wait, so <laughs> you're you're from Texas and you're more on the the liberal side of things, and because aren't they pretty much a red state? Oh, very much so. Yeah, right. Well, I was how did very that work? I was gonna say, how did that work for you? I I was. I was the goofy hippie that everybody loved having in their life, and um, I, I was just kind of the oddball. Hmm. But I was an accepted oddball. Well, that's cool. So they didn't cast you out with the scarlet letter and say, I'll stay away from that crazy bitch. She's a Democrat, right? Oh, well, I definitely had those. Oh, did you? <laughs> did you really? Oh, my God. I'm sure it was oh, yeah. pretty close to that, too. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I know. Texas is really, yeah. man, I mean, they're, you know, they're as ultra conservative conservative Republican as liberal as New York or California or Chicago. I mean, you know, they're two extremes, so. Yeah, which, I mean, I was back in the days pre-Bush. Oh, were you? And, uh. When Ann was, uh, what the heck was her last name? Um, Ann something. She was awesome. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. But, I mean, yeah. being from Chicago area, it's, it's Chicago, the city is ultra Democrat, crazy liberal crap. And the, and the further you get out, it becomes more Republican. But, we all coexisted, you know, and politics really didn't, you know, divide people. It is now, but it it didn't. Believe it or not, Texas is actually, it it's pretty tolerant when it comes to that, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Yeah. At least it used to be. I mean, it's been, you know, 20 years since I've lived there, but, yeah. um, well, 15. Yeah. But um, they were actually, they were, Texas was already always pretty pretty tolerant of others views i mean it was it was more a mentality of that's your yard this is my yard you keep an eye on your yard i'll keep an eye on mine oh it's being a neighbor yeah yeah that should go without saying but i know some people just it's getting to the point where if you live next to a opposing person and views of political things right now and your neighbor's house is burning down and they're gonna go oh that's too bad fuck go fuck yourself that's how bad it's getting right yeah i don't give a shit she voted for trump whatever good (laughs) really Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) whatever Hmm. well let me ask you this because i didn't even want to talk about this since we're kind of eking into this so I might have this incorrect. Do you know about the law that was passed by Colorado government about the transgender identification on state IDs and birth certificates? Do you know about that? No. Yeah. I do not. They did. They they made it easier what where is? a transgender can put on and apply for even their birth certificate without a bunch of resistance or hoops or whatever to change their what they think they are is to compare to physically what they are without argument whatsoever. I'll have to look into it more and see what the exacts are about it because I mean I know some incredible transgender people and um, I'm not saying they're not but I'm just I'm just because see that's where it gets uh, I brought the illegal immigration up a few times on my show way back in the past, and it always goes to personal. Well, I have a granddaughter, and she's a undocumented immigrant, and I love her to death, and I'll do anything for her. So then they take it into a personal. It's, it has nothing to do with personal. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it has to no, do. No, I'm just saying that 
I mean, I, I love know my. That, um, I know the trouble that they went through. Yeah, with, and well, you know, I, trying well, to get new IDs I, and things like that. Well, I I could see that. Like my car's a car, and if I walk out there and call it a horse, that would cause me some problems too. So I, I mean, I get that. I, I get how it could cause you problems. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what's next? I love my dog if I had one and, and just because it acts like a female and it's a, it's a male, I'm not going to insist that on the pedigree it's changed to a female. I mean, you know, I I just, it's getting a little weird. So that's all. Yeah. I guess, I guess from watching people I know go through it. Um, one of my best friends down in the, down in the Springs is trans. And she's mm-hmm. actually much older. Um, she's, gosh, she's got to be in her 70s now. Wow. And, um, yeah. And she she did the whole marriage and military um, as a man. And um, waited until her wife died and then started doing the change. And she's hmm. actually she's gone through all, all the surgeries, so hmm. she is. Yeah, I just I don't know. Physically, a woman now. I I want but, to understand um, it, but it's difficult. So you have to you have to hear the backstories. Um, hmm. The backstories are what what will help un- help you understand. Well, and that's what I want to hear. Um, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. That is, um, but yeah, it's. I know I'm one of the few people who knows like her full backstory, mm-hmm. and and it was traumatic. Um, you know, from from about seven years old, um, mm-hmm. she always wanted to wear dresses and um, wanted to be female. So. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's when you hear the personal stories, that's when when you start kind of understanding. Not really, because I mean, just like with any anything, you know, unless you actually go through it, you'll never really have an, a real understanding. Well, but I do, I, mean, I do have a theory on it. If you want to hear it, okay. And this will shock people because I know right off the bat, I, I mean, atta- attacking me for me not understanding and say, look, you know, if you really can't figure out who the fuck you are, you got a serious problem. OK, but I, it, in saying that people go, oh, you're just an asshole. You know, like, like you don't understand. It's like, well, you know, what? OK, then explain it to me so I do understand or I get some type of comprehension on it, because that that's just that's a normal reaction because. It is. I mean, I didn't tell people or a doctor when I come out my wiener's flapping around that I'm a boy or a girl. And in the Bible, what you believe, there, you know, God, whatever uh, the saying is in Genesis, God, God created man and then woman. You know, I mean, it's the fucking way it is, man. You know, don't don't try to change that. You're a man. You're a woman. So there you go. But that's a physical part of it. Now, if right. you want to get into There's the a lot more to it well, and this physical. is where and this is where I'm going to go with it. Here's my theory on this. Yeah. Do you do you believe in reincarnation? Oh yes, I do. Okay. So do I. And the best books to, for this that I've ever read is Ruth Montgomery. I don't know if you know who she is, but phenomenal. She was a White House correspondent way back in the '60s and yeah. '70s, and she got into this stuff in meditation and listening to spirits and guides and all this kind of crap. And uh, she'd actually meditate Mm -hmm. and she would communicate with these guides and she would write what they were saying through her kind of like channeling, but it was writing not the physical turning into somebody. Anyway, she said that there is reincarnation and we keep coming back to learn our lessons. So we finally ascend into whatever heaven is. Okay. So, so get okay. this. So get this. This is very deep. It makes a lot of sense to me. Why is it that a kid can come out and play the fucking piano without ever having a lesson? Right. 
Why is it that some kids? I think it's part of your background. Why is it that some kids come out of the womb and they can talk a different language? Right. Yeah. Okay. So Memor when memories of past lives. Exactly. So the theory behind that. And one of which is that there's gender tied to that genetic memory or whatever you want to call it, spiritual memory. That's you know that that's actually something I had never thought about. Well, before. maybe Even you'll learn something. That kind of stuff is. Hey, listen, in case you don't know, this is the original Red Pill Show for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hello, did you not hear that? <laughs> no, it's to make you think, and this that's what this is. Believe me, I don't. people will finally get it someday. Well, that guy's a fucking asshole because you don't like transgenders and gay people and black people. Yeah, you know what? Go fuck yourself, okay? Because you are so far off the mark, you have no idea what you're talking about, okay? Right. So... This is what I was trying, because I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's why people come out speaking Chinese and their babies. And, and obviously somebody needs to know Chinese in the birthing room when it happens. But it's like, what the fuck? This kid's talking Chinese. How's that? He's a white kid in Tennessee. You know? So, or, or when people are racist, and no matter what, they're racist till the day they die. What better way to learn that karmic lesson than come back as a black person? No kidding. See? Or if you hate gay people, you know what? You're coming back as a gay person. And yada, yada, yeah. yada, and on and on. And if you're a rich asshole and you never help that's people. Actually a really, that's actually a really good theory. Well, and it, this is one that I ascertained or thought way too deep about. So now it's falling into, because at first it fell into the homosexual gay thing. You know, it's like, really? How can you be attracted to sticking your wiener in that guy's butt? What's wrong with you? You know, but I, the, I don't get off on it. Or the other way around, they'll lick a lot of puss club. You know, if they want to do that, that's fine. I don't get it. I don't mind watching it. It'd be fun for a guy. But, I mean, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. But why is it? Why is that? Well, because in a past life, you were a woman and you came back as a man, but you still have the woman attraction or tendencies of the opposite sex or vice versa. So that's still there. So yeah. now it comes out as the transgender thing now, too, and goes past that because, you know, let's just say that you've gone through five or six past lives and you're born again. In all those other past lives, you were the same sex. And now this time, on the sixth time around, you're a man instead of a woman. Well, good luck with that. How are you going to be a man when you've been a, been a fucking woman for give or take 80 times, 480 years? Right. Or more. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I know that's actually, it's, for me, that's a very plausible theory because I do believe in reincarnation and, mm -hmm that we we carry along those mistakes and we have to rectify in order to move to the next level. Right. Right. Cuz cuz my dad, I mean, he's a great guy, but he's from the south and he's quote unquote, you know, has some racial tendencies until my granddaughter was born and she's half black and he kind of kind of changes tune a little bit. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm like, man, you know what? You don't get your shit straight. You're, you're going to find out the hard way coming back as a black person or whatever, or whoever you're discriminating against. A gay black person, that would be perfect. A poor gay black person would be perfect <laughs> for my dad to learn his lesson. Then. I'm serious. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love him to death. Great guy. Stubborn as hell. Racial tendencies, very judgmental, blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know what? You're going to come back as a poor, black, gay male. And what better way to learn your lesson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Car karma can do some interesting things to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen it. I I've seen it. But the, the karmic indebtedness or justice sometimes is not served uh, in one lifetime. You know, it, it no, could take one or two or three. Not. Yeah. Yeah. 
But but what what see and that that explains the gender the gender transgender um I'm just gonna say confusion or tension or misunderstanding or whatever yeah. word you want to use where both people the transgenders and and the heteros or whatever can can comprehend what's going on and that does it for yeah, me that's actually. It really does. Um, I mean, obviously, it goes right into my spiritual beliefs. So, yeah, but you never really made that connection, though, right? No, I really didn't. Yeah, I, I really see. didn't, um, because I always looked at it from a scientific point of view. Right, which everybody's doing, and then these poor people are confused yeah. as fuck because, God damn it, why do I look like look at a guy and I'm a guy and I'm attracted to him and I want nothing to do with a woman? Well, maybe that's because. You've been, you know, the the sex that was different for hundreds of years, and you learn your lesson, and now it's time to flip. But you have all that stuff ingrained into your spirit or your soul, and when you're in the physical body now, the parts ain't the same. You know, yeah, that uh, that's yeah, very actually it, it makes total sense to me. Yeah, that's very plausible and very you know very like. If you can wrap your head around that, oh, no, that doesn't happen. You were born and we die and that's it. You're done. Okay, whatever. Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's explain the vibrations and everything else and the deja vu and all the other type of weird oh, yeah. crap that we experience as humans. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, we have, a, we have a connection level that is so far beyond understanding. Right. Oh, absolutely. And it's all vibrations in a sixth sense and even beyond. It's all energy. Right. All about energy. That's right. But if there is a God or a higher power or whatever, oh, no, it's a, you know, it's just I, I love that. I can't wait till AI gets to the point where it thinks it invented itself. <laughs> I, that's how I look at that, too. You know, it just defies all common sense and logic is to like, well, there was this big explosion and boom, you know, I could see if it was just the human race, but you got to give me a fucking break. Really? The fish, the birds, the insects, all that crap was just because of a big bang because it just was perfect condition for that to happen. And bam, all this different types of life was created. Come on. Come on, really? So, and we're all supposed to evolve spiritually. And if you don't, mm-hmm. then you go back and you keep doing it till you do learn. And you're putting in positions that you were very judgmental and didn't agree with. Like all the Trump haters, they're going to come yeah. back as being Trump. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I don't um, know. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um, um. <laughs> well, in uh, all the old, all the old, well, all the Obama haters, you know, I mean, they're they're going to come back into the role that they were totally against, and they're going to see how it feels and how ridiculous it is. Yeah. So, you know, like if you're an I ultra, definitely agree with you, you know the political definitely. analogy would not be good, but it's like you're a full Democratic, yeah. fuck Trump thing and you're going to come back and be born into a well-off rich republican family and you're going to go what the fuck and then vice versa you're in a republican you know i love trump and bush and all these guys and you're going to come back as into a democrat just to learn that perspective you know i mean it what's but it's more of the life thing and doing things politics suck that's why it's not a good example but it's always about you part of life yeah, politics and religion and money wouldn't be good lessons to learn, I don't think. But how you treat people and think of others, that that's what you're supposed to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So. And being being quote unquote woke as much as I hate that term. Um you know, it people think they're woke. Woke? You but mean, they have so far to go. You mean awake? Well, yeah, yeah, you know, um, you have people that, you know, talk about, you know, being woke. Yeah. That they're woke up. No, you have you know, no they have idea. All this, 
wonderful understanding. No. But most of <laughs> no them worries. have about maybe a little smidge of it. Yeah, well, put it this way. If you can sit and listen to anybody, including Alex Jones or Gerald Salente or whatever, and you can listen to them without reacting and, and call that, quote, unquote, normal conversation like you see on the news, then I would probably say you probably are awake. But if you're reacting to it and fighting it and trying to convince other people um, to see it their way and wake up and blah, 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 which I did. It was a, it was a phase. Uh, you're not awake yet. You're, 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 you're awake when you accept it. And just like the woman that came up to me out of the blue in a public place and told me she was a member of the Illuminati. And she goes, oh, he didn't run away. I go, that doesn't fucking surprise me. I, I mean, yeah, really? <laughs> Why would I? Yeah, exactly. I'd actually love to sit down and have a chat. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to share something about that because it's interesting you said that. Because on top of all the physical stuff and the sex and all the intimacy and that was, was great, I truly truly mean this i have never talked to a person in my life that was so smart so intuitive and so um just making me think we talked for uh, we talked all night the first night or second night oh, it was more than one night all night okay. long laying in bed blah 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 and she told me some things that was so much that that i did write them down and i never do that when i when i talk to somebody I don't take notes to go, oh, I got to talk about this or go back to there. But I had a whole page from Apple Computer to to the uh, Vatican to uh, to famous movie stars that I will never bring up to all this stuff. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And she wouldn't shut up, So, which was fine because the more she talked, the more I learned, allegedly. You know, or she was in whatever it was she, informing me. I don't know if any of it was true. But just a fascinating, uh, and the things that we sh she was saying, put it this way, if I wasn't awake or awoke or whatever, I would have said, you're fucking crazy, um, and walked away, and I'm done. You're just, you're just a crazy bitch. Uh, but I didn't, and there was 10 days of this stuff, and I just wanted more and more and more, and I still don't know if she was legitimate or not, but she was just saying some things that made way, way too much sense. Um, and things that I oh, had yeah. knowledge, it's, crazy. Whenever, whenever you run into somebody like that, you should always take that opportunity to listen mm -hmm. and really listen. You know, not yeah. not hear, but listen. Yep. And you know, yeah, they will they will challenge a lot of things that you believe, but at the same time. They're going to open your eyes up to other possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she... You know, we're human. We don't know what what is the truth about everything. You know? Well, she's very interesting because she, she taught me about reverse engineering and flipping it upside down and, and stuff like that to figure things out, which does figure mm -hmm. things out, but what it does, it, when you flip it upside down, it transfers the power from whoever has the power to the yeah. person that wants it which was very interesting. Um, she also, things that mm -hmm. weren't weren't known, she did it by lottery, which was nothing more than drawing shit out of a hat. And she did this in front of me, and I, and I recorded it for her because she wanted it because she's putting it on her Facebook page, which I'm not going to say what it is. And she picked Bernie Sanders. That Bernie Sanders is going to get the nomination for the Democratic Party. And I, I said that. I go, I know. Yeah. I already said it. I said, I know who's going to be. It's going to be Sanders. And she pulled that fucking name out of that hat, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Weird stuff. Weird fu I mean, things that just can't be figured out or reverse engineered or predicted or whatever. She she said, well, you, you do that by lottery. Some fascinating business, structure, yeah. corporations. We talked about money, currency, where that's going. I don't want to say anything about that until I see a hint of it. But... Um, just remember EBIT. Just remember EBIT. Just so people... Well, yeah, sure you can say because it it's out in the news. Just remember EBIT. That's all I'm going to say. Let's see Let's see if any of this has anything, any type of validity to it. And that, that won't get anybody in trouble. So, let's see. It's just a cryptocurrency and we'll see what happens. 
That's all I can say. But fascinating. Very fascinating. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah it really is. And um, what she is, quote unquote, doing, I believe, is the same thing that people who would call themselves witches um, mm. do. Um, yeah. It's, it's using that energy to, quote unquote, pull the right answer. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, she's letting the universe decide, you know. I mean, all the answers right. and knowledge is, is in the ether. You just have to access yourself to it. And you could probably do that through a right. type of lottery thing. I mean, explain it. Mm -hmm. Explain what makes you pick that thing out of that hat. You can't. Well, it's it's energy. It's, well, well, right, it's exactly. The, um, the attraction and repelling of energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she did She did say some things. She said, I met uh, this really famous person, movie star. She goes, I met this, and I'm not going to say their name. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. Well, then two, three days later, I find out that that famous person was in Loveland, Colorado. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. So I really, truly don't know. Pro the problem is she's got a great heart, but she's been hurt so bad. And then she's she's even allegedly a Scientologist, which I believe in some of their See. some of their things because they make sense but in all honesty i i think they're all crazy uh i don't believe in any, any of those that that cut you off from other people mm -hmm. if they don't believe the same way right. you do right i have issues with well, i have major issues with well, those then that and they try to discredit you they attack you so that's not that right either i mean right. but the yeah, because I read, I read Dianetics, and I started when I was a kid getting into 1920, and I just, uh, I'm like, no, nah, this, ain't, this ain't for me. But the poor girl has been so um, damaged that she doesn't believe in marriage or commitment or uh, any of that type of thing. She just believes in open sex and this and that and everything else. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. You know, however you deal with things, that's your, that's your thing. But... Uh, Regardless of that, right. very, very, very smart woman. Oh my God! So fascinating. I'll never forget her. Never really. So well, she was meant to come through your life. Yeah, I know. And but open your eyes to some different things. Oh, and then she said she was Satoshi. She said that share that, which is just totally ridiculous. The person that invented Bitcoin. I'm like, wait a minute. Out of this uh, entire fucking planet, I run into you at a Harley Davidson dealer ship. <laughs> and you're Satoshi. She goes, Yeah. I mean, what I, see if I wasn't truly <laughs> awake, I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you. You you go get back on your meds and fucking get out of here, you know? <laughs> and even that one, I mean, that was probably out of everything she told me, the one that was like this bitch is nuts, but again, who's to say? Yeah, that one I would I would have to question that one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't, I don't know, but nonetheless, I mean, it it took me out of being awake to be to like testing me being awake by having this person. However, because she goes to me, she goes, "You think it was just happenstance we ran into each other?" I go, "I don't, I don't know. I doubt it. It seems kind of weird." She goes, well, maybe your friend set us up for some reason. And the friend I was with, there's no way. I go, no, you're way off the mark on that one. Because she was kind of thinking he, he knew who she was, and he was trying to get to her through me. Um, Because she was, she goes, well, you're going to have to go through the FBI and get vetted and blah, 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 and all this stuff. She says, I don't give a flying fuck. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you anything you want to know. <laughs> You know, it, it, it was just really weird, but she's very, very protective in who she lets around her um, for security reasons. It's just weird. But my whole point of all this is, is that, you know, what you said, be awoke or being awake. And believe me, I've, I've been tested and it's been th since 2008. And if some person could come up to you and say all the shit she did to me and I'm just sharing a sliver of it, then you're yeah. awake. You're awake. You should be able to see anything, hear anything, whatever, and go, huh, okay, <laughs> you know, whatever. That's your true test. 
And it happened to me. And now she's gone. I mean, I know where she lives. I've never driven by her house. I'm not going to. I have no desire. I ran into her accidentally at the gas station that we both go to, and she lives right by there, but I've been going there forever, come and go. And, and, and you know, I really don't want to associate with her because, um, well, you just don't email somebody after 10 days and break up a relationship. You just oh, don't fucking that do it. You know, it's like, it's really not somebody I want to be with. But, um, but be that as it may, it was just a fascinating experience. And one, I still can't figure out because the more I think about it, the crazier it is. So, well, it can be, but you also just have to look at it as, you know, the universe was bringing that person into your life for you to learn some things. Oh, and it did. Everybody comes into our lives for either a lesson mm-hmm. for you or you're a lesson for them. Yeah, right. Or you're supposed to be together and be together for a while because that's what the universe right. wants. So whatever that may be, friend, right. marriage, whatever. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some purpose. Right, exactly. There's some purpose for everybody that crosses into your path. You know what's a fascinating book for that is I just got done reading it again was Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. That is a fascinating book. Napoleon Hill is just oh amazing. Oh, my God. I'm like, this book, this book is so insightful. It's, I mean, what better to find out why things happen and evil things and why people are the way they are than interviewing the devil himself? I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're getting right to the source. And it's amazing. The questions that are asked and, and the answers that are provided. It's just like, whoa. <laughs> so, fascinating book. I, I, I Every time I just dived into it again, happenstance, and I ended up reading the thing again. I'm like, wow, that book is just freaking highly recommended. So, But it's along the lines of universal this stuff. So, yeah. Interesting. I don't want to get into it. It's just you, you just people got to read it because if that doesn't get you, then nothing will. So, but all right. Well, it's seven oh five already again, and we didn't talk about <laughs> anything we say we will. That's why I don't like doing that. Of but, course not. But we'll get to it someday. But I did have a couple yeah, hits of right. sage, so I'm feeling pretty good. My, <laughs> and it smells good. And there's no witches. So, but yeah, that's, um, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't plan on talking about any of that, (laughs) but that's the way it is. And that's the way it goes. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, we'll bounce things off of each other and then people that are listening, hopefully they'll take it in without some type of bias or judgment and go, you know what? I'm really going to think differently about people that are fighting or, um, struggling. I get whatever words. And we've got to be careful with what you say, but struggling with um, their gender. Uh, yeah. And and I really, truly believe um, if it isn't true and it's all horseshit, then so be it. But let's just say that it's not. It may not be. And these people are really confused in who they're supposed to be because they've been attracted to the opposite sex, opposite sex for so long in reincarnation, but then they come back the other sex and they're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And it makes perfect sense to me. Well, yeah, it it actually it does. It makes it makes perfect sense. Right. Um, it, for the person really going through for the person <laughs> going through it and the people that are seeing it and can't accept it. It's like what the fuck yeah. you, what what do you mean you don't know if you're a man or a woman? Here, let me show you. Look, see? You know, duh. <laughs> And even the Bible, there was man and then God created man and then created woman from man. What's the fucking problem? Well, there you go. If Adam and Eve were the first humans, there was no reincarnation. They were the beginning. They were Genesis. So there's no fucking mental problems, you know, from reincarnation. Now there is. And reincarnation, by the way, was taken out of the Bible from how I understand it. And I don't know if it was in, uh, mm-hmm. I forget the book that was uh, taken out that had it in it. And they took it out because the, the oh, church. There were, there were a lot of books taken out. And that that's part of the reason why I have problems with organized religion and and the Bible. and Right. 
things like that is because too many men's hands have made the decisions on what what it says. Yeah, the Book of Enoch is what I'm trying to think of. That that was totally stricken from the Bible. Oh yeah. It, it, in all the churches, well, regard. Was... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say there was also Lilith, you know, Adam's first wife. Yeah, see, I don't even know about that. But the whole point of it was the whole organized religion didn't want their members and congregation thinking they had a second chance. You get one chance, and we do what you do what we tell you to do, or you're going to hell, or you're going to heaven, or purgatory, or whatever. And that's not the way it is. They should be ashamed of themselves. I agree. Yeah. So what better Which, way I to... Mean, if you look, you know, Constantine used it as a form of control. He saw the power it had. Right. And that's all it is, on top of money and some other crap. But for for that, for people to understand themselves and the people to try to understand the people that are trying to understand themselves, that's common ground. It's reincarnation. It It's the effects yeah. of reincarnation. And if you can't get that into your head and absorb that and honestly look at it and go, you know what, that makes a lot of fucking sense like you did, um, then you're just maybe mm -hmm. beyond beyond help or you're probably going to come back as a transgender in your next life and you're going to see how that feels. Yeah. It just it calms everything down and puts compassion and empathy and understanding well, it really into does. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's making me think about you know the the trans folks that I know, and um, I've always been very active in the LGBT community. Well, it, and uh, yeah, it just it makes me think about that, you know, and and everything that they go through and their own questioning of themselves and right things like that. Well, I'll give you and one. That's actually an incredible way to yeah. to explain it. Well, and here's one even deeper, and I'll and I'll let you go. People ask why does God do God things, or why 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 do bad things happen to people at such a young age, whether they have uh, deformities or mental challenges, or God forbid, cancer or whatever. And here's why, okay? Here's why, because in a past life, and this is from stuff I've read, and not so much research, but just read, makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. The reason why that you're having those challenges as a human being is because you chose that because in a past life you were the meanest person as far as mass murdering or just just an evil evil person and the only way that you could really learn your karmic value and lesson is to come back as a person as a human being that would experience all this pain and suffering because you don't you don't recall that when you're in human form but you recall right. it in a transition form passing from death as a human to the spirit world and then you choose your karmic lesson by the physical plane and you come back as a very very sick person which makes perfect sense too yeah it does because you're, and that's something i've always believed so right right well some people think as well you know you got cancer because you're a fucking asshole you're a bitch or you're just a mean person no that's not what it is it it was pretty much a situation that you accepted to learn the value of life and the meaning of life and blah 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 and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So which makes which makes again yeah. perfect sense, like the transgender thing. So so for people that think God does bad things, God doesn't. You're choosing your karmic lesson, and what 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 right. better way to learn the appreciation of life if you were a mass murderer and didn't care about people and killed them and everything else and then you were executed and capital punishment or you rotted in prison you, you came back and you're going to learn the value of life and the meaning of life because you're going to give be given life but it's going to be taken away from you with all the pain and suffering that you could possibly imagine and i'm not saying right. that's right i'm just saying yeah I'm, I'm actually that's that's one of my very firm beliefs actually there you go about reincarnation so why would it be any Is different that, with, no, you, go ahead Oh, just that you know, you your your karmic life mm -hmm. has been decided prior to your birth. Yes. And yeah, you know, you have to you have to fix those lessons to eventually move on. Yep, 
It's all pre-programmed or your destiny or whatever you want to call it. It's all, all in motion. It has nothing to do with you. It's going to happen regardless of what you do. You're just going to have yeah. to hopefully learn that lesson. And it makes perfect sense yeah. into the transgender thing. So. Yeah. And if you don't learn the lesson, then you come back again and yep. go through it again. <laughs> or, you come, or you come back as the person you were attacking, like I'm saying. What better way to learn? So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. It's 7.15. I got to get out of here and pay for people that sit on their ass and pay my bills. <laughs> so, okay. You have a great day. All right. You too. And I'll, I'll talk to you in the morning. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. So that was Melissa. And uh, it's time for me to go. I have to make the donuts and pay my bills and give the government their money so they can send a couple billion dollars back over to Iran or fucking airplane. So there you go. Thanks for listening to me. I hope some of that made sense. And uh, just make you think about it because everything happens for a reason. You have been listening to the original Red Pill Show. <laughs>